Welcome to It's Up To You, a show about amazing stories from amazing people that will empower you to create the life you are intended to live. Today, I have an amazing story with Miss Connie Carey. Hey, Connie. Hi, Jackie. Thank you for coming. So nice to be with you. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I know that you have a heart pull today. You have some things that you want to share, that you want to empower people to continue to move forward in spite of. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, I... Uh, I I went skydiving a couple of years ago, and that was something I'd wanted to do for a very long time. And it was so much fun until they opened the door at 14,000 feet. And the tandem instructor that I was hooked to began shoving me forward, and I, instinctively I began shoving backwards, and I decided, I. I, I don't want to do this. I don't know what I was thinking, but it was too late. And out the door we went. Wow. And as we were falling, I thought, you know, this is a lot like life that we all, by God's design, find ourselves falling at some time in life. Mm -hmm. so, and, and by that I mean it could be a bad report from a doctor, it could be a, a wayward child that you're wearing your knees out over in prayer, it could be financial loss, mm -hmm. a d divorce, someone mm -hmm. who said he'd be there forever but, mm -hmm. but they left. Mm -hmm. So it, the situations are different but we all find ourselves falling at some time or another. Well, how do you, how do you, when you're falling and you find yourself falling, what do you do about it? How do you stop it? Well, my situation was um, that in 2005, I lost my dad to suicide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was, um, had been an alcoholic for many of his years, but had recently at age 70 gone to rehab completed the rehab, gone to AA, had had a year of sobriety, was doing very well, and he came to live with us. Mm. And it was a marvelous time. But unexpectedly, he took a downward spiral. Mm. And uh, I found my father in, uh, in the middle of a road behind mm. his car, having taken his life. Mm. Mm. I was not prepared for it. I was not expecting it. And I truly, Jackie, felt like I was falling. Mm. So during that time of grief, I, I found myself in four different postures, okay. really, not any particular order to it. Um, I, I wasn't writing it down at the time. I just, as I look back, I realized the Lord really took me through four different steps, okay. as you will. I hesitate to call them steps because there's no quick, easy fix yeah. when we go through grief. Um, but but I know that the Lord did these things, and I just say F-A-L-L. -L. It's four things that he, that he showed me. And number one is F, focus. Okay. You've got to focus on truth. Okay. Not myths, not hunches, and not feelings. Okay. Uh, I hear people say, hurting people say that they cannot help their feelings, mm -hmm. and I believe that's true. Um, but I do believe that people can help what they think about and what they That's choose true. to think about directly influences their feelings. Their feelings, you're right about so that. So we've got to choose what we can, what we do have a choice over is what we choose to think about. Yes, yes, okay. And then so the A? A is admit, admit that it's more than you can handle. Hmm. Uh, I, I know we hear it all the time, uh, God will never give me more than I can handle. We hear that all the time in Christian circles, but there's just one problem. It's, it's just not true. <laughs> and in fact, we have biblical evidence for that. David said, save me, God, for the waters have come up to my neck. Mm. Paul said, uh, we don't want you to be uninformed about the trials that we faced mm -hmm. in the province of Asia. We were under so much duress that we were to the point in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened not that we would rely on ourselves, mm -hmm. but on God right. who raises the dead. So we've got to admit these things that, that the Lord allows in our lives, sometimes they are more than we can handle. And the sooner we admit that, I think the better off we're going to be and let Him be our strength, okay. not, not try to be our strength right. ourselves. So, so it's recognizing that, recognizing and taking steps to realize that I can't handle I this. Can't handle I can't this. handle this. I do need help. Yeah. And I think sometimes Christians feel guilty when they secretly know, hey, this is too big for me. I can't handle this. 
mm -hmm. because of that myth. Mm -hmm. God will never give you more than you can handle. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, He is going to give you more than you can handle on occasion so that you can run to Him yeah. and find Him to be everything yeah, that you that. need. I totally get that. Well, what about the L? L is um, let go. Let go and let God have his way. There's a lot of things we have to let go of. How do you let go, Connie? How I, do you let go? I know, that's easier said than done, but part of that is letting go of some things that are happening in our unwanted situation, which might be anger. Okay. We've got to run to the Lord and admit to him that we might be very angry about what he's allowing in our life right now. Mm -hmm. And then that is the first step to being able to release that anger to him okay. and to be honest with him and say, I don't like what you're doing, God. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't want to be here right now. Mm -hmm. And you're letting this go on far too long in my life. But I believe confessing that to the Lord is the first step of saying, all right, I'm mad. I'm mad at you, God, but you know what? Your ways are higher than mine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just ask you to be God in my life. Mm -hmm. That's how we begin to let go. And sometimes, you know, I understand that it's, it's very hard to let go, especially when you really just don't understand. Yes. And you know, it depends on where you are in your relationship with, with God. It mm -hmm. depends on where you are in life. You know, that's uh, that can be a very hard place to be. But um, I think mm -hmm. that what you're doing and where you are at this point, having gone through those steps, mm -hmm. I know we have another L, but having gone through those steps, uh, you recognize that there's some action that needs to be ta to take place mm -hmm. and you are taking the action you've taken the action obviously um, so tell me about the other L the last L is so we've got F focus mm -hmm. a admit mm -hmm. L let go mm -hmm. let him have his way in your storm mm -hmm. and the last L is look look expectantly for his glory mm -hmm. and even in the most unwanted of situations you know I, I know you've heard Christians say this before they'll tell you about a time in life and they say that was the hardest thing I ever went through mm -hmm. and then they'll smile and they'll say but you know oh, I, I felt the presence of God mm -hmm. in my life in a mm -hmm. way that I'd never experienced I, mm -hmm. I, I felt God using me in a way I'd never experienced mm -hmm. before so we have to look expectantly mm -hmm. for his glory in our unwanted situations and and also look for people to comfort yeah well i i know that in some of my hardest times mm -hmm. my i mean 2008 was one of my hardest times i i'm a realtor uh -oh, and yes. uh, when the market hit you know things just went boom 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 the rug was snatched right from underneath me i didn't know what to do uh, my husband didn't understand uh, that it wasn't me. Right. It was the entire it industry. It was the economy, yes. And so we're, I'm trying to recover, trying to figure out, I don't know which way to turn. But in my hardest time, that's when I got, I had the biggest breakthrough. You know, once Absolutely. I was able to go through those things, I had to dig deep and figure out what to do next. And if I wouldn't have gone through that, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. I know I wouldn't be because I had to do some self-examination. I had to stop just doing business as usual because at that point there was nothing as usual and I had to figure it out. We had to yes. figure it out together. Yes. So I understand that. So it does, but I know also, Connie, that I had to make a decision. Yes, you did. I had to make a decision that I was going to dig deep and figure it out now, I could have made a decision to walk away and said, forget it, I'm going back this way, never to turn around, but I didn't. And it sounds like that you've not done that either. So mm. how do you continue to move forward and how do you write books and how do you uh, get in a position where you are comfortable with, with your experience, such mm -hmm. as tragic as losing your father to mm -hmm. suicide, but how do you reposition yourself, get everything worked out, get all the hurt and all the disappointment and all that worked out mm -hmm. to move forward and then how do you do that in a way that other people that are watching your struggle, you know, uh -huh. can dig deep to do it. Even if they could never have a conversation with you, kind of, they just watched your life. How can they do that? What can, you know, they do? Well, Jackie, I, um, I, this is what I felt. I know the coroner's report said that my father died from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I knew that the real primary cause of his death was that 
he chose, there's that word again. Yeah. Choice. He chose to listen to the wrong voice. Mm. I'm a mm. loser. Mm. I'll never get this right. Mm. I, I don't know all the things that w he was struggling with mm -hmm. in his mind, but I know that he chose to listen to the wrong voice. Mm -hmm. And then after that happened, then I had my own tempting voices where the, the enemy would say to me, oh, if only, mm -hmm. oh, if only mm -hmm. you, at five months your dad lived in your town and that's the only day you didn't go see him, Connie, mm -hmm. if only. Mm -hmm. And I knew that those voices, those poisonous voices were tempting me. I, by God's grace, I recognized that I had a choice mm -hmm. and it was not overnight, but I chose to focus on truth rather than self-defeating okay. thought patterns. Okay. Okay. And I believe that is the way out. And it is not overnight. It's not a quick, yeah. happy fix. It's by a process. Any means. It's and, a and, process. And you know, the road out of a hard situation is jagged and messy. Mm -hmm. And we don't just go straight up into glory. It's up and we're doing well and then, ooh, it's horrible the mm. next day and you say I, I was doing so well mm. and then the next day it's a little bit further up and maybe a drop down and then it's jagged and messy but the Lord brings us out when we choose to listen yeah. to his voice it, you know to, to focus on what we know is true. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. No plan of his can be thwarted. I know the plans I have for you, yes. says the Lord. Yes. We look at the life of Joseph, who for 13 years was in prison, mm -hmm. and it seemed like God had forgotten him for sure. Mm -hmm. And yet God was working behind the scenes to create a wonderful outcome for Joseph yeah his family, the nation of Israel, and for all of us for centuries later who read his story and um, are encouraged. Well, Connie, um, I, I truly have enjoyed having you here today and sharing. I, I really feel that what you have to say is very powerful, um, having experienced what you've experienced, and yet you are mm. uh, still moving forward and falling, you know, up, falling up, falling up. <laughs> and uh, I think a lot of people will understand that because you've put it in a way where it, you know, it touches your heart. It makes you pause for a minute mm -hmm. and realize that you do have a choice. You do have a choice how mm -hmm. you feel. You do have a choice how you respond to something and you do have an action to take. Mm -hmm. um, so what, where, where do you go from here uh, when, when you've made the decision to move forward? It gets harder some days, mm -hmm. but some days it's easier. So you uh -huh. keep moving forward and easier, I guess, each day? Yes. Oh, okay. absolutely. And uh, God will get us to the other side of grief or whatever our unwanted situation is. And he'll get us there stronger in our broken places wonderful. if we will let him. Wonderful, and, wonderful. Uh, Wonderful. Well, I just want to encourage you, if you've heard what Connie has had to share today, that you find that place that you are in, uh, pause for a minute and make a decision to make the right choice, listen to the right voice, and you can change your path. You can get rid of the hurt. You can make a difference and you can follow up. We'll be right back. Thank you.